Hey guys, so we've covered the balancing method to solve linear equations in one variable, but I had promised you something better, quicker, and more efficient. That method is what we're going to talk about in this lesson, the transposition method. But before we jump to the method itself and what logic it is based on and its application, let's learn about a preliminary concept the concept of inverse operations. Inverse operations can be defined as a pair of operations which undo each other. So if you take any number of variable and then you apply that pair of inverse operations, then the end result is the very number of variable you started with. Let me give you an example and this will become crystal clear. Let's say your starting number or variable, let's take a number for simplicity's sake, is 10. Then you said add 5 and then you said subtract 5. So you would have 10 plus 5 minus 5 and the answer to that would be 10 itself. So you added something then subtracted the same thing and then you ended up with the number you began with. You could have subtracted and then added the order in which you apply inverse operations does not matter. Similarly, let's look at division and multiplication. So you said 10, multiply that by five and then divide that by five. So you'd have 10 into five, 50, 50 upon five, 10. Just like that, there are a bunch of other inverse operations and as you learn more and more in mathematics, you will discover more operations and their inverses. But for now, addition subtraction and division multiplication are the two pairs of inverse operations that you need to know most critically. Having understood what inverse operations are, we are now in some position to begin approaching the transposition method. But before we actually get there, let's solve a few problems using our balancing method. Example one. X plus five equals to three. So our objective is to isolate the variable. So there is on the LHS X plus five, we need to get rid of the plus five. So what do we do? We subtract five from both sides. So the LHS becomes X plus five minus five, that is X simply. And the RHS becomes three minus five. Now I want to take a pause here and point out something. Our starting equation was x plus 5 equals to 3 and after trying to eliminate plus 5 from the LHS using the balancing method we had on the LHS x we had on the RHS 3 minus 5 so we had x equals to 3 minus 5 so we started with x plus 5 equals to 3 and we ended with x equals to 3 minus 5. So it's almost like when 5 switched its loyalties from the left hand side to the right hand side, then it went into the exact opposite mode. Instead of being positive, instead of being in addition, it became negative. It was in subtraction. Now, of course, you can solve the rest of it, x equals to 3 minus 5, so it would be x equals to minus 2. Example 2. x minus 5 equals to 3. Again, we are going to try to solve this using the balancing method, because the transposition method, we have no clue about it at this point whatsoever. So we've got on the LHS X minus five and we want to get rid of the minus five. So we will need to have a plus five on both sides. So adding five on both sides of this equation, the LHS becomes X minus five plus five. That becomes only X. The RHS becomes 
3 plus 5. Again, before we move on, we started off with x minus 5 equals to 3 and we ended at this point with x equals to 3 plus 5. It seems like when we had the balancing method applied, kind of the minus 5 from the left just became a plus 5 on the right. So it shifted sides and correspondingly shifted from being subtracted to being added. Interesting. Anyways, on the question x equals to 3 plus 5, so x equals to 8 is a solution. Example 3. 3x three equals to 6. Now, we have 3 multiplied by x on the left. So we need to get rid of the 3 in multiplication. So we divide 3 on both sides. LHS becomes 3x divided by 3. That is nothing but just x. The RHS becomes 6 upon 3. We started off with 3x equals to 6. And up till now, we have got x equals to 6 upon 3. Interesting, isn't it? How instead of being multiplied as it originally was being done on the left, the 3 came in the denominator, was in division on the right. That's not actually what we did or intended to do at least, but that's apparently what the balancing method effectively induced. Anyways, x equals to 6 upon 3, so x equals to 2, of course. Example 4. x upon 3 equals to 6. So we've got 3 in the denominator, 3 being divided on the LHS and using the balancing method, we would need to multiply both sides of the equation by 3 so that we would have on the LHS x upon 3 whole multiplied by 3. So 3 in the numerator and 3 in the denominator would cancel out each other. On the RHS, it would be 6 multiplied by 3. So, so before we finish this question too, we had x upon 3 equals to 6 when we began this question. And now we have x equals to 6 into 3. It almost feels like 3 in division on one side automatically went into multiplication when it was transposed to the other side of the equation. Anyways, x equals to 6 into 3. So x equals to 80 is the solution of this equation. All of this was solved using the balancing method. Mind you, I haven't really talked about transposition or taught you the method of transposition or informed you of its logic, but we simply applied the balancing method on a range of examples and made some observations. So what were these observations that we just made? If you were to forget for a moment that we applied anything called as the balancing method and if you were to disregard the middle step of our solution, then what you would see happening is that something being added on one side would subtract on the other side. Something being subtracted on one side would get added on the other side. Something multiplying on one side would divide the other side and something dividing one side would multiply the other side. So we were able to move, to shift and in technical mathematical terms transpose a number and this is true of even a variable. We can transpose a number or a variable from one side to the other side for the purposes of variable isolation and just inverse the operation which it was performing. Think of it like you're reading a novel and there is a plot twist. So when a character changes allegiance, 
then it is generally followed by a complete U-turn in the nature of that character. Their personality, their actions and their behavior become the exact opposite of what they used to be, of what we used to think they were. That's the same as what is happening in the transposition method. So instead of doing that proper full-fledged balancing method, you'd need to now just isolate the variable by taking all of the numbers on the side in which the variable is present and throwing them onto the other side just making sure that you inverse the operation that those numbers are performing in the process. All right, with that in place, we are now going to tackle some linear equations in one variable, and we're going to attempt to solve them using the transposition method. Let's go. Pause the video after hearing each question and give it a shot yourself before you listen to Bhavya's solution. Question one. 7 minus y equals to 9. So on the side of the variable, which we will analyze first, we've got 7 minus y. We've got a minus sign corresponding to the variable, which is weird, and we've got an unnecessary 7. So we usually look for our final equations to be x equals to something or y equals to something, not minus x equals to something or minus y equals to something, because we don't want the value of the negative of the variable. We want the value of the variable itself. So let's aim to change this minus y into plus y. And the way to do that, of course, is transposition. So we transpose minus y to the RHS and thus it becomes positive and the equation changes to 7 equals to 9 plus y. Now on the side of the variable, which is the RHS now, we've got 9 plus y. So there is an unnecessary 9 out there, which we need to discard. How do we do that? By moving it away. How do we do that? By transposition. So transposing 9 to the LHS, it changes from positive to negative, And thus we have the equation changing to 7 minus 9 equals to y. Now, if you know your addition and subtraction with positive and negative numbers correctly, then you would know 7 minus 9 can be calculated to be minus 2. Thus we have our equation minus 2 equals to y. And this is nothing but y equals to minus 2. Therefore, the solution of this equation as found by the transposition method is y equals to minus 2. To build confidence and to make certain, let's verify this answer by substituting minus 2 in place of y in the original equation and seeing if it satisfies the equality. We had 7 minus y equals to 9. In place of y, let's put minus 2. So the LHS of the original equation would become 7 minus minus 2. So two negative signs adjacent to each other cancel out to give a positive as we already know. So 7 minus minus 2 becomes 7 plus 2, which is of course 9. And the RHS of the original equation was also 9. Therefore, the equality is satisfied. The solution of the equation 7 minus y equals to 9 is indeed y equals to minus 2. Question 2. 8 upon x equals to 4. This is strange because our variable is now trapped in the denominator. We usually want x equals to something, not something upon x equals to something else. So our aim, first of all, should be to move x up from the denominator to some numerator. How do we do that? 
transposing x to the RHS, it changes from being in division to getting multiplied and therefore the equation becomes 8 equals to 4 multiplied by x. Now on the side of the variable which we analyze is 4 into x. So we have got an unnecessary 4 in multiplication on the RHS transposing 4 to the LHS therefore would make the equation 8 upon 4 equals to x. So 4 from the numerator or being in multiplication on the RHS has gone down to the denominator or in division in the LHS. So we have got 8 upon 4 equals to x. 8 upon 4 is nothing but 2. So 2 equals to x which is the same as x equals to 2. The solution of this equation is x equals to 2. We will quickly verify. So putting 2 in place of x in the original equation 8 upon x equals to 4. The LHS becomes 8 upon x that is 8 upon 2 that is 4 and the RHS of the original equation was 4 as well. Thus the equality is satisfied. Thus this is the correct solution. Therefore the solution of the equation 8 upon x equals to 4 is x equals to 2. Question 3. 4x plus 1 equals to x plus 10. odd stuff going on. We've got variables on both sides of the equation but we want to isolate the variable not just away from all of those numbers but also in a way that all of the variable terms are clubbed together. So let's try to bring 4x and x on the same page which is to say on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to transpose the smaller variable term that is x so that it goes closer to the bigger variable term 4x. Transposing x to the LHS it changes from positive to negative and thus the equation becomes 4x plus 1 minus x equals to 10. Now evaluating the LHS 4x plus 1 minus x is the same as 4x minus x plus 1 so if you have 4x from which you are subtracting x or 1x then that would become 3x of course. So the LHS has become 3x plus 1. The equation is now 3x plus 1 equals to 10. The path forward is now fairly clear. We have got on the side of the variable 3x plus 1. 3 is unnecessary so is plus 1. Let's get rid of plus 1 plus 1 when transposed to the RHS becomes 3x equals to 10 minus 1. Thus the RHS is 10 minus 1 which is 9. The equation has now become 3x equals to 9. On the LHS we have got a 3 in multiplication to the x. Let's get rid of it. We transpose 3 to the RHS as well and thus it changes from being in multiplication to being in division. The equation becomes x equals to 9 upon 3. 9 upon 3 is nothing but 3 therefore x equals to 3. Let's verify our solution. Is x equals to 3 correct? Let's put 3 in the original equation. The original equation was 4x plus 1 equals to x plus 10. Let's evaluate the LHS. 4 into 3 plus 1 that is 12 plus 1 that is 13. Let's evaluate the RHS. 3 plus 10 so 13. Therefore 13 equals to 13, LHS equals to RHS, the equality has been satisfied, the solution has been verified. Therefore the solution of the equation 4x plus 1 equals to x plus 10 is x equals to 3. I hope you are now comfortable with the transposition method. Transposition really is just a shorter and faster version of the balancing method. 
those are all the questions that we will be solving for now but before i leave you i want to make one important clarification there is no one and only one way of applying the transposition method just like the balancing method you can solve the same question using the same method with different procedures you could have transposed a number in place of the variable you might have wanted to transpose from the rhs to the lhs instead of the lhs to the rhs and you could have done all of those different things to yield the same correct answer so don't be afraid of solving these questions in a way that is slightly different from mine let me give you a hint you can solve question 2 by transposing 4 to the RHS and then taking the reciprocal of both sides of the equation. Try it out and try to solve the other two questions using some unique approach that you come up with. Okay now, I'll take your leave. Comment your doubts below, subscribe for more, share this with your friends, catch you in the next one.